What's up, fellas? Oh! How's everybody doing tonight? Hope y'all had a great weekend. I feel like there's a dog around here somewhere. I just can't find him. Here he is. <laughs> What's going on? Everybody get some flying in this weekend? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have fly-ins again. We just skipped February. The sound is off. What? What do you mean the sound is off? Like you can't hear me, or the sound is just not in sync with my lips? <laughs> F you, Kenny. Volume is really low. Did you turn your volume up? <laughs> volume is low. So, yeah, turn your volume up. Y'all have a volume button, don't you? Like a knob? Twist it. Like, like titty twisters. You know. Titty twisters. Clockwise. <laughs> All right. So, hey, we're going to do some fun stuff tonight. I got a little bit of a different camera set up. Um... You can hear the gyro and the husky. We got a little bit of a different camera setup tonight. We're actually using the webcam to shoot over this way instead of the fancy Sony camera, which is right here, because we're going to be doing a little bit of soldering. And instead of watching me from that end, I thought you guys might want to see what's actually going on. Uh, it's not Raptor cam. It might be a little different, maybe better. I forgot to get my little sponge wet. Let me go get my sponge wet. <laughs> nope, we're not putting a new motor in it, Ethan. We're changing out the ESC. has bigger bullets than the ESC so I gotta make an adapter but first I gotta let my dog out because he's like begging to go to the bathroom and I don't want him peeing on my foot while I'm trying to solder some wires So I got the sponge wet. We are good to go. All right, let me see. Uh, let me see how this looks. We're gonna switch over to the solder cam. <laughs> What's up, BD Tennessee? All right. Can everybody see? I don't really know what to do with my hands right now. I don't, you know, something weird happens. Like when I'm in the, 
the webcam, I don't get any weird pauses, but when I'm, when I'm, uh, like using the other camera through the capture card, I get like these weird pauses in the middle of things and I can be moving my hands around and then they'll just stop for like a second, but that's all right. So what we're doing today is we're going to put this here fancy Spectrum Avian 60 amp ESC into the Husky Special Edition. And why wouldn't you? Because the Husky is orange and black and it needs to have an ESC that's orange and black. You know what I'm saying? And here is the big chunky motor that goes in the Husky Special Edition. Is a 3948 700 kV motor. But the problem I've got is the bullets, the bullets on the motor don't, they don't get into. So I've got to make a little adapter to make these bullets compatible with this ESC. So that's what we're doing. And for those of y'all that saw my wonderful picture from yesterday, I do have a new prop to put on the Husky. <laughs> Jim McWhorter, welcome to the show. I don't know if I've seen you here before, but it's always good to see new faces. Yeah, see, Mafia, that's a good idea, man. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a battery, G1 style, and then uh, start cutting, you know, balance leads off, because... That's a good idea, right? All right, so here I've got some 14 gauge wire. Uh, this is the same that is on the ESC. Uh, so we're gonna cut these to about three inches because the, uh, the wire on the uh, ESC, the battery lead is not long enough anyway. So I wanna add a little bit to the motor wires and that way I've got uh, I can set the ESC back a little further which will give me enough battery cable to be able to sit the battery in there and connect it without having to extend the battery wires so we cut ourselves three lengths of 14 gauge wire we're gonna go ahead and strip the ends of those so hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here if you can't sorry um, then I'm just stripping a tiny bit maybe like a quarter inch about four millimeters off of the end of each one of these little three inch lengths of wire David Mark Graff, how you doing? I see all Shadow Ops in there. David Snyder, Roach Coach, how you doing, sir? Today we're doing some, some crazy electronic work. So you can kind of see me in the webcam up in the corner. And then the main screen, we're looking at a uh, somewhat of a close-up of my very crappy soldering technique. <laughs> Joseph Ramsey, how you doing tonight? It is good to see you. All right, so our solder should be warmed up, but I don't, did I not bring my little tub? I think I just brought my my pen, so I need to go get my little flux tub. All right, 
Well, I got my little tub of flux here. I'm gonna crank that open. And what I do with the flux whenever I'm tinning wires like this, uh, you know, so I'll just twist the twist the ends of the wires, just give them a little twist where they're not fraying out all over the place. Hello, Ryan. Good to see you, sir. Dennis Farley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. My plan is to get everything put together and then with the motor running at full blast, we're going to cut all three motor wires all at the same time with scissors. <laughs> All right, so what I like to do is just take my soldering iron and dip it into the flux here. And this is just like a rosin paste flux. And I'll get like a pool of flux going. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Make like a little pool of flux and that helps to clean off the tip of the soldering iron. And then I'll just take the ends of the wires and dip those down into the flux, which gets them nice and fluxed up, which is exactly what I need. I need the wires to be all fluxed up. All right, so now we have our wire tips fluxed. And we'll take our little helping hands because because I'm a big baby and I don't like to get, I don't like to get burned. So we're gonna move our little clips closer together and I'm just gonna put one end in both sides of the clips of the little helping hands here and we're going to solder up or we're going to apply some solder just to those little tips just the tips and get those tinned up real nice for solder today i am using and I'm almost out. It is 6236 2 uh, rosin core solder. So this is a um, little bit of lead, a little bit of nickel, a little bit of silver. Good stuff. Get that end all tinned up and nice. And then we got that end all tinned up. We'll drop that out of the clips. And get our next wire ready. And this is some old school Radio Shack solder. Can't get this stuff no more. Which is a damn shame because I'm running out. The Radio Shack solder was the best. It is almost like watching solder dry up in here, isn't it? Hmm. 
All right. We're just tinning these ends. One more set. Yep, and, and hopefully for people that are, you know, trying to learn something, you can see what's going on well enough. All right, so we've got all of our wire ends tinned. For those of y'all that, that want to see that, oh, oh, there we go. We've got those tinned up, and uh, now we can prep our little bullet ends. So what we're doing is we are adapting it from a three and a half inch or three and a half millimeter bullet, uh, which is what is compatible with the Spectrum ESC and converting that over to a four millimeter female bullet, which is what's compatible with the motor. So they, they need to go, the, this one's too small. It doesn't stay stuck in there. <laughs> Now, as far as what we're doing here, I just grab, uh, some people have like a little wooden block. I just use my helping hands. Uh, I need to get those cool magnetic ones that uh, Pilot Ryan had on his uh, show one night where it's that magnetic pad, you know, that has like the arms that you can manipulate any way you want. Uh, that would be super slick, but for now, I don't have one of those and that's okay. Um... So what I do with these ends is I have a flux pin um, because it's hard to take like this this thick paste flux and get it down in there unless you just make a giant mess. Uh, so I'll take the flux pin, uh, which is like a little, you know, almost like a little Sharpie. You just press it down like a paint marker and I'll uh, press that down in there and get some flux down inside of the end of that bullet and then we'll take our soldering iron and get it on there there's a little hole we'll Get that thing nice and hot until it starts melting the flux. I'm sorry, not melting the flux, but melting the solder. And when the solder starts melting, it'll make a little pool of solder down inside the bullet. And then we'll just drop that tinned lead right there inside the bullet. We'll leave our soldering iron applied. 
Drop that right inside there. And everything should be nice and fused together. So there we got one of the female ends soldered on. So we'll go ahead and just repeat that process two more times. First, we'll get our little solder pool. We'll drop that wire right down inside there. All right, we're good to go for number two. And now we'll do number three. Right, and uh, so what I'm doing with the bullet is I put it inside the little clip where it's it's vertical, you know, kind of straight up and down. So as I'm filling it up with solder, I don't uh, have that solder kind of spilling out of there all over the place because that would not be good. All right. Now, normally we would put the heat shrink on beforehand, but because of the way that these are, uh, I mean, they're nice and skinny and the heat shrink just slides right over them. Uh, and a lot of times what will happen is that heat shrink will deform uh, if it's too close to the heat source. So I like to uh, put the heat shrink on after the fact when I'm working with these, you know, bullet connectors like this. And it works out good. All right, before we get to the smaller male bullets, I'm going to check the chat and see what's going on. Yeah, we're doing like actual electrical plugs. It's crazy stuff. So Jim McWhorter, I am soldering these leads. What I'm making is some adapters to go from a four millimeter male to a three and a half millimeter female. So we're changing out the ESC in the Husky Special Edition. Uh, so I'm changing that out with a Spectrum. It was a, uh, it was the Arrows RC 50 amp ESC, uh, but the Arrows uh, ESC and the motor that came in the Husky Special Edition has four millimeter uh, male bullets and the Spectrum ESC only has three and a half millimeter female bullets. So I'm just making adapter plugs to go from uh, the four millimeter uh, male to a three and a half millimeter female. So that is what we're doing.
All right, so that is one done. We still need to put the heat shrink on there. And again, we're just dropping a little bit of flux down inside the socket there with our flux pin. Now, if you guys haven't used these flux pins before, they're fantastic, especially when you're working with things like this or with like solder pads on a circuit board. Uh, these are fantastic. Shay, what is up? Hey, Shay, I got that. Uh, I got that receiver today, man. Thanks. our second complete adapter made now this one we're gonna hit it eh, I'm not really that worried about it that's gonna be covered up by heat shrink anyway and this will be our last thing that we're gonna be soldering You'll notice like after each solder joint and you know before each solder joint I'm cleaning off the tip of that soldering iron because you know just like with almost every other application where you're using the tip of anything you want your tip to be clean. You don't want to put your you don't want to get your flux on with a dirty tip. You know what I'm saying? That's just gross. You want a clean tip. All right. Looks like we are all finished up now with our solder joints. So I'll go ahead and turn. Actually, I'm going to clean that up real quick. I know I said I wasn't worried about it, but I lied. I'm going to clean that one up just a bit. heat shrink will clean things up a little bit because you know it's never good to work in a filthy workspace with crap all over so we'll get some of this stuff moved up out of the way we don't need the solder we don't need the flux we'll put the cap on it and the flux pin we don't need that anymore I've got the soldering iron turned off and uh, we'll go ahead and start getting our heat shrink ready to go.
pierced. <laughs> Sorry, we're we're almost done with the boring part. So, uh, pay it forward. I'd like it a lot if I didn't, you know, if I didn't nose it over the first time I landed the thing and busted the prop without having an extra prop at the field. So that was crappy. So we did go out to the field with the Husky yesterday and I brought it down on the paved runway and I, uh, the descent rate was a little too high and I kind of pancaked it a little bit. Now the gear, you know, held up fine and the big fat tires uh, that I've got on there because I've got these big Dubro, you know, big Dubro inflatable tires. I mean, they fully compressed, and when they fully compressed, I had a prop strike on the runway, and one blade of the prop just went woo and went flying off. <laughs> Man, this one is being a pain in the butt to get the heat shrink tube to slide down over it. The other ones should be fine because these are oversized. So they'll be good to go. But these that I'm putting over the male end the three and a half inch male end of the adapter. I'm having a hard time slipping this little piece of heat shrink over that bullet connector. All the other ones were easy. <laughs> Probably not the best idea trying to smash that down. <laughs> what a pain. I think we're getting it. We're almost there. Yes. All right, so we've got the heat shrink tube on there now, and we're going to hit it with the heat gun. So I know a lot of people will use, like, cigarette lighters. I don't like it. I don't like using cigarette lighters for heat shrink. I think that's El Dum Dum. I like using a heat gun. Because, uh, I mean, I know it's it's heat shrink, 
but heat shrink will also become heat melt. You know, and those of you guys that have used a uh, cigarette lighter to do that in the past, you know what I'm talking about. This stuff will melt if you get it too hot. So I use the heat gun on the low setting, and that gets it just enough to shrink the heat shrink tube, but not hot enough to melt it, which is exactly what we want. All right. And then we'll go ahead and do the female sides, and that'll be a lot easier. just about done with all of the fancy videos about making things with soldering irons. Let's get that in there. done with the heat gun and the soldering and all that fun stuff so now we should be able to take our motor from the husky special edition and we should be able to plug the so I mean I color-coded them so I may as well plug them into the right colors right to the speed control may be flopping around in there a little bit and that's quite all right by me all right so I'll go ahead and re-aim the camera a little bit yes pay it forward that is exactly correct you do want to do it right the first time um, you are only really screwing yourself if you don't. All right, so that'll give you kind of a head-on view of the front of the Husky there, where we're going to be doing the Lord's work and upgrading this guy from a 50 amp ESC to the 60 amp Avian ESC and turning it all smart and spectrum like so all right but let's let's catch up on the chat a little bit um david snyder maybe david yourself what's up um we're gonna see how 6s looks uh because with the av and esc i'll be able to see a live current readout um 
and check and see, you know, how feasible it really is to run 6S on this thing. I'll tell you, when I flew it yesterday, uh, all I brought was 4S packs, and it flew great on 4S. Um, the prop that I'm putting it on is actually a little bit hotter than the stock prop, so uh, the stock prop is a 13 by 7.5. And the one that I put on there, the one that I'm putting on there now is an APC 13 point, or 13 by 8. Uh, so an extra half inch of pitch, uh, which to be fair, I mean, that probably doesn't make a damn bit of difference, a half inch of pitch. But, uh, if anything, it would be a little hotter running that prop than it would be the, uh, the stock prop. Come on now. So unfortunately the battery tray doesn't come out with this thing, so I'm trying to fish the battery lead. Ah, oh, it's stuck on the GoPro strap here. To let gravity help us out a little bit, I think. So here's a question: Is anybody familiar with the FMS um, reflex gyros? Because this does have. A version of an FMS reflex gyro in it and for whatever reason they run the throttle through that reflex gyro and I don't know why I don't think that the you know that the throttle is actually part of its corrections at least I don't think it is but I'd be interested if anybody knows exactly why they have the throttle running through the gyro. Um, it seems a little weird to me. I'm trying to get that battery connector through there. I've almost got it. Hemostats. Stats. <laughs> All right, and then we got the battery plug pulled through. Make sure we get the motor wire. Hold up through there. <laughs> so, I ended up having a lot more motor wire than I needed, but hey, that's a nice little service loop there. And now we've got the ESC and the battery cable pulled up into the battery hatch area. And now we can, uh, uh oh, go ahead and get the motor remounted. 
And I remember those screws being a little tough. To uh, get out of the X bracket. So what's funny with this is they put a much bigger motor in the spot of the old motor. So the old motor was a, I believe, a 35 size can, and this one is a 39 size can. Uh, so it's four millimeters bigger, uh, but they had to use the same size X bracket, which makes things a little snug. Oh, I guess I got my big fat melon like right in the way. <laughs> so if you did want to see what I was doing, you wouldn't be able to because my big fat head I'm just getting the screws for the motor tightened up. That is all. Snug. And you know, I don't have any exact torque settings, torque specs for these motors. I just give it a grunt or two, you know, like give it one good little grunt, like, <clears throat> all right, tight, tight enough. Okay. There it goes, the Gazenta. All right, so we got the motor installed. New ESC is in. Let me plug this here wire into our receiver. Booyah. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, we're going to do a little something something here. The uh, first flight that I did yesterday, I was actually using the IX-12 because it was already bound up to the IX-12. But I got a new model ready to go for the Husky in the NX-10. So 
So we're going to go ahead and bind it up to the NX10 and see what's what. And since we got the camera like right here, I'll be able to show you what all of the smart data looks like on the brand new Fancy Smancy NX10 because I know that everybody wants to see that, right? <laughs> all right, so we got our big fat 3200 4S pack in the Husky. receiver in bind mode, press the bind button and turn on the NX10. Binding. DXMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry. Bind complete. Alright, we're configuring some telemetry right now. So we should have all of our telemetry data. We got a little smart logo right there at the top of the screen that's pretty slick Rick so now we can see all of our telemetry data as we move across we got our flight log we got our min max ESC min max ESC status battery info there's all of our cell counts uh, so that is a you know a partially charged battery there I didn't use all my batteries yesterday because, you know, I uh, blew my prop in half. Now there's our Vario to tell us altitude because we're running the uh, Spectrum AR8020 receiver in here. Uh, and you'll see why we need all that stuff here in just a second. Now here's something that's pretty cool with the new uh, ESCs. And this will actually work on the DX series radios too. If you see there, we've got Smart ESC, and it has like some different commands, like stick commands that you can do, uh, where it says to enter the menu, step one, hold five to 10 seconds, low throttle, up elevator, and left aileron. So if you do that, uh, it'll actually get you into the ESC programming mode and allow you to program your ESC right through the transmitter, uh, just like you would forward programming. Uh, it's all right there. It's the last page of all your telemetry, uh, and that's awesome with these smart ESCs. So if you need to go in there and adjust your timing or anything like that, you don't need to hook up a programming card. You can do it right from your transmitter now, which is awesome. Okay. spinning I'm just gonna slide that on there real quick I think actually I think it's spinning no, that is spinning the right way beautiful so because that is already spinning in the right direction we're gonna go ahead and slap the cowling back on the front here swap any motor wires or do any tomfoolery to get the motor spinning in the right direction.
Now one of the things that we can see right now is just kind of where we're sitting. Um, Yeah, so we're only pulling like four amps at full throttle right now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we got the cowling on. We'll put our spinner back on. We've got our new APC 13 by eight prop. Uh, and that goes right on there. We don't have to ream the prop out or anything. Put our prop nut on. Give that a little oomph. A little grunty. Uh, all right, I'm happy with that. And then we'll put the front of our spinner on. Okay, so we'll uh, move everything out of the way here because I'm going to do a little test run with the prop installed. Uh, we're not going to run it up to full RPM, but I'll go ahead and stand back. I'm pretty pumped about what's going on right now and if you guys you know are paying close attention you would have seen that oh it's it's a lot further away than it looks um, so I need to go into my servo setup and take Box two. All right. Are you guys seeing this? Are you paying attention? Did you see it? Do you see what's happening? Motor on. Ha ha ha! Braking. Motor on. Yes! <laughs> yes! 
That makes me so happy. All right. So now I'm going to move everything off the table real quick. And uh, how much time do we have? All right, so it's 9 o'clock. We still got plenty of time because I have a special surprise that I want to share with you guys tonight. Uh, there's at least one person here that already knows what it is, but everybody else is like, oh, a surprise, what could it be? All right, but first I want to see how many amps we're pulling on 4S. Uh, and we're going to use the built-in current meter of the... Uh, of that AV and ESC to tell us that. But I want to move everything out of the way because I know we're going to make a little bit of a, a gust. don't want me or any of the stuff laying around here to get hurt but I unfortunately do need the prop on there to be able to see what the static current is So, for those of you that are curious about what we're going to do here, we're going to be testing the current of the motor fully loaded, right? So, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to the prop, or not... Not the prop, that'd be a terrible idea. I'm gonna hold on to the tail and run the motor up to full power and using the telemetry output, uh, which I can see what the min and max values are uh, for the ESC. So currently the, the peak current uh, that it's seen so far has been 25 amps. Uh, so we are going to do a quick static run on 4S power. And hold on, I'm moving everything that could possibly fly off the table. I don't want anything flying. Because, uh, I mean, this is a big freaking plane. So it can absolutely throw some stuff around if you're not careful with it. I would just put the battery hatch cover right back on it. All right. We'll move it where we're fully over the, uh, the cutty mat. And uh, I still don't recommend doing this because if the prop breaks while we're doing this, it uh, it could get ugly. But we're going to see what happens. All right, is everybody ready? Yep, me too. All right, so that was a full throttle run. And we hit. <laughs> All right. Who wants to take some guesses? Throttle cut on. With our 60 amp ESC, how much current we just hit on that ESC? It's got some power. So remember, it has a 50 amp ESC stock. I'm running a 4S 3200 battery in here. So 
So, hopefully you guys will be able to see this. This number right here, can y'all see that? 53, 53.7 amps on 4S. 53.7 amps on 4S. So what that means is that a 50 amp ESC is really not enough on 4S. Now, this is a 13 by 8 prop. Uh, the stock prop is a 13 by 7.5. So it probably, I mean, that half an inch of pitch probably gives it a tiny bit more load. Uh, but, I mean, I, I would not recommend running this thing on 5S, y'all. Um, I know it says it's 5S capable, but I wouldn't do it. That's just me. I think that even 5S is too much. Uh, that is true, Jeff. Um, you know, the when it, with it unloaded, it would certainly be less current. Uh, you know, what we just did, a static pull is a fully loaded motor, right? Meaning that, um, and, and I'll go ahead and switch the view back to the front view. So that is a fully loaded motor. Uh, meaning that it's pulling, uh, I mean, it's trying to pull the weight and it's not letting it, right? So, like, imagine you're trying to pull the truck that has the brakes on. You're going to use a lot more power, but once you get it moving, you, you know, like if you're trying to pull a trailer or something, getting it to move initially is a bitch, especially if the brakes are on, which is effectively what I'm doing. I'm, you know, holding on to the back of the motor or to the back of the airplane. And... Uh, you know, that's that's the most load that that airplane will ever see. Um, you know, with the possible exception of a vertical climb, you know, towards the end uh, as it's, it's, it's reaching like it's vertical stall. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, I know that we're going to pull a lot more than that on 6S, way more than that. We're going to pull way more than that on e, on, on 6S. <laughs> so that's what's nice about these AV and ESCs is they give you all of that data right on the screen. So I don't have to hook it up to a, a motor, you know, test bench or anything like that. I can get everything that I need right on the screen and what it's telling me. You know, and I'll and look, I'll test it again in flight, uh, you, you know, where we get it off the ground and we test it unloaded and I'll just keep it, you know, I'll do a max run uh, and see what it hits. But as of right now, I mean, we're we're pulling over 50 amps. So with the stock ESC, I don't, I, you know, like I said, I don't know that I'd run it. Maybe 5S is okay on the stock ESC. I don't know. I mean, yes, it unloads in the air, but how much does it unload? And how much headroom do we have, you know, beyond where it says max continuous current and peak current? Because every ESC has that too. How much can it, you know, usually the number value that you see on an, on an ESC. So the one I put in here is 60 amps, for example. Uh, it's actually got a peak of, I, well, I've got the box right here. I think it's got the specs on the box, or it's in the manual one. Yep, so... The Avian 60 amp ESC, which is what we have in here, has a peak, or it's got a continuous current of 60 amps and a peak current of 80. So, playing from down to 02. Uh oh. So, with an 80 amp peak current limit, uh, I'll check it out on 6S. I'll fly it with 6S, but I'm going to be very conservative. 
Um, I mean, I just I don't want to I don't want to burn out the ESC. I got a shadow. You know, I'm not done done. <laughs> so we're gonna set this off to the side because I have another special little thing that I'm gonna do tonight. And since we finished this up earlier than I expected, we can do the special thing. Sorry, I keep going off camera. That's so rude. All right. So you guys ready? You guys ready for the special thing? No, we're not going to do a line of coke on the table. Come on, Mickey B. But I do have, I do have this line of coke. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Cause we don't drink Pepsi in this house, damn it. We don't drink no dang Pepsi. We drink Coca-Cola in Atlanta. So the amp rating on the new ASC, it is an Avian 60 amp ESC with a 60 amp continuous current limit and an 80 amp peak current limit. So I do not want to um, run it higher than 80 amps. Ah, Coke is it. <laughs> All right. Is everybody ready? Y'all see this? It's smart stuff. We got more smart stuff. So, I hope y'all are as excited about this product as I am. Because, man, this thing is super cool. Brand new, fresh unboxing of something that I've personally never put my hands on before. It is the S44 ACDC 1S Charger. Now, that doesn't seem very exciting because I've got all kinds of chargers. What the hell would I need with this little thing? So here's the power cable. You can plug that right in. Uh, you can also go input. Uh, you can have DC. 11 to 15 volts input or plug it into AC over here, which is cool. So that's nice. I didn't know it was AC-DC. That's cool. Like the band. Da, 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 da. I'm going to get a copyright strike for that, right? Just because I was humming. I'm talking about electricity, fools, not the band. AC-DC. So, this is the, and it's not new, right? Like, this has been around for a little bit. It is the S44 uh, Micro LiPo Charger. This is made for the Spectrum 1S batteries. Now, if you have, like, a lot of UMX planes, uh, these things are awesome for charging those batteries. Uh, you don't have to bust out, like, your big charger and use parallel charging or any of those weird charge adapters. It's got all the little adapter ports that you need. It is only good for 1S packs. Uh, so, you know, you can't hook up like your your 2S and, and 3S micro batteries. <coughs> Excuse me. But for the 1S micro packs, these work fantastic. Now, what's interesting is like why why would I be showing y'all this? Why would I be showing y'all a one ass charger? Who gives a crap about a one ass charger? You know what I'm taking, man? Y'all are better than this. 
There might be some on my shirt, Jeff. There might be some. Somebody done getting. Yes! Because we've got the UMX Night Vapor in the house. Woo woo! <laughs> and I'm so stupid excited about this thing, I can't even. I, I can't express how, how excited I am about a stupid night vapor, right? These things are so small and so cheesy, but you know, with the night vapor and the 1S packs, I've got a ton of those 1S packs already, the 150 milliamp hour 1S packs that the night vapor uses, and man, I mean, we're here, why not? We're unboxing this biatch right now. And I mean, let's give y'all the close up look, right? Let's give y'all the close up look. So I got a little piece of tape on here. That's bull crap. I'm gonna have to cut that piece of tape off. Come on now, get cut. Stupid piece of tape. No, I'm not the first to break one of these out. There's been a lot of people that have broken out the night vapor. I mean, this may be the first one that you see this fresh out the box, though. Oh, yeah. And let's peel some tape off here. Now for this one, I actually picked this up at my local hobby shop, right? I didn't use my discounts at Horizon. I went to my local hobby shop to support the good old hobby town USA today because uh, I had some gift certificates. What's up? And I'll show you all that too here because that's this is actually something I'm pretty proud of. But I had to get the Night Timber. Or the, the night timber, the night vapor. Da da da. <laughs> this thing is so cool. <laughs> it's so silly, but I love it. It's like it's so small. <laughs> Check it out. These itty bitty tiny, you know, the linear servos that they have in here. These little bitty things. You can kind of see them right there. I mean, all your electronics is right there on that little tray, everything. Uh, you've got all your light wires going up. Um, and it has your two control rods, one going back to your rudder, one going back to your elevator. I mean, this thing is awesome. And they're so silly. <laughs> now I got a book here on the bottom. The instructions. But I think I want to try something with the NX10 here, fellas. So I don't know how much time we got. It's 9:20. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some of the batteries. I'm gonna get. I think I think the book. I thought it was supposed to come with a battery. Or is it only the ready to fly version that comes with the battery? When you get the bind and fly, there's no battery. Is that what's up? I don't see a battery anywhere in the box. So I guess if you get the bind and fly version, 
you get no battery, which is fine. I've got batteries. Yep, Biden Fly does not come with a battery. Oh well. We got some. I'm going to plug in my fancy new charger. And we're going to get some batteries cooking. <laughs> I'm super excited. And if we can get a battery fully cooked uh, before the end of the show, we're going to show off the setting up a bind and fly model in the NX10 because it is absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's so fragile. Yes. So I don't know how to use this charger. But we're going to figure it out. For now, I'm just going to dump out little ultra micro batteries all over the place. I've got some 500 milliamp hours, but I doubt this little plane, I think that battery weighs more than the whole plane does. The little 500 milliamp hour packs, I don't think those are going to work. But I also have a whole bunch of the, of these, uh, 45C 150 milliamp hour packs. So I'm going to plug those right on in here and see see what's what. Okay, so the little wheel on the charger takes you between LiPo and <clears throat> LiPo high. I guess that's LiPo high voltage. Yeah, but to start the charge cycle, you just press the button. And then we're going to crank up the current. Uh, we're going to charge these at a whopping... Point two amps. All right. I don't know if you can see that. Like once you start it, you can change the charge current. So each one of these is now charging at point two amps, which is a hair over one C. So one C on these would be point one five. Um, so it's a hair over one C. Um, so they may not get done charging before the end of the show and that's okay. So anyway, that's the special surprise is the super cool UMX night vapor. Now what I'm, uh, what I think is kind of funny, right? Is Why, why did they feel the need to call the vapor a UMX? Is it is it more ultra micro than the night vapor used to be? It, they didn't make it more micro. It's the same size. <laughs> this is. It's the same size. All right, what do I do with the keyboard?
Yeah, this little charger is great. It, it, you know, at, at first I didn't want I didn't want to mess around with uh, you know having to get something like this. Um, you know, and it's it's kind of out of the shot now, but we'll we'll move this out of the way and and put this over here. So you can see this little thing in action. Maybe. I don't know. There it is. It's charging. Dang it. Um, I didn't want to get one of these, you know, because like the batteries and stuff, I use these batteries in my little helicopter. I, I've got like a lot of like the little, little drones, little helicopters, things like that, that use these same packs. Um, so I was pretty thrilled when the night vapor came out and it also uses those same packs i was like yeah i've already got a bunch of batteries for this thing so this charger though this thing is sweet uh because i used to have to like count them up or whatever i mean i can charge four batteries at a time which is plenty uh i can charge them all the way up to 1.2 amps each uh, which is crazy i'm, I'm never going to need to charge them that high um you know, the most that I would do is like 0.3, uh, which is like a 2C charge rate. I don't, I don't know how much of a charge rate these things can take. Does it say on? 3C maximum charge rate. So the most I could go on these things is 0.45 4, 4 amps. But we're not going to do that. I'm not going to charge them at the max charge rate. That's funny, Ken. So, Kenny, uh, I think it was Brian and Bobby that were trying to do loops with the night vapor, and they couldn't do it. Um, or they were sure having a heck of a time with it. You know, they were having to get it up, and then uh, it would just kind of roll over. <sighs> Boogeyman Brown, that's disgusting. <laughs> I don't want your nasty Pepsis. Oh yeah, they're going to love chasing it. The cat's going to love chasing it. It's going to love chasing the cat. That's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> it, it'll, it probably will, you know, on a fresh pack, fully charged, maximum voltage. <laughs> The airframe, what airframe? These little toothpicks this thing's made out of? So, it, I mean, it yes, it is all carbon rods. It's all like carbon tube or carbon rod. <laughs> carbon rod that this thing is made out of, but man, um, they're thin, thin carbon rod. But from what I've seen, you know, from where GB was playing with it and where um, Ryan and Bobby were playing with it, I mean, this thing can take a, a, a thump and make it out the other side just fine. So I'm excited to uh, get it up in the air and try it out. See you, Roach Coach. Have a good night, man. Thanks for coming by tonight. And I mean, I hate to do it because it's it, it's been worn down on another channel so much that I, I feel out of place saying it. But you guys know what to do. <laughs> if you're looking for a night vapor, these things are a hundred bucks right now at Horizon Hobby. Go to rcairmarshall.com, click on that Horizon Hobby link, and... Uh, it helps out the channel, doesn't cost you anything at all. Yeah, that's what I was surprised with, man. Every Everyone that I've seen flying the thing so far, I mean, they are just beating this thing down. So I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm excited to get it going. Yeah, that's how we'll leave it. We'll leave it right there, just like that, resting 
Rest it on the wheels. It ain't like it's got any weight. It's not gonna not gonna bend anything. So, like I was saying, if y'all are looking for a UMX Night Vapor, check out the pinned message up top. You can go to rcairmarshal.com right there on the front page. You will see a great big horizon link. Click on that. Do a quick search for the Night Vapor. And if you purchase it using that link, it will help out the channel. And we absolutely appreciate it. We love you guys. And that is by far one of the easiest ways to help out the channel where it doesn't really cost you anything. And it helps us out a ton. <laughs> so TNRC, um, you, that, that's, that's your call to make. You know, I don't make up the pricing. I'm just telling you that this thing is is a load of fun. And they've always been around that same price point. So it wasn't a, a huge surprise, you know, at least to me when they came out with the uh, the $100 price point. Uh, George Watts, if the wings do come off, I have no idea how to do it. I'm sure they do because they have to be replaceable. Um at least I think they might not they might only be connected by like these two points on the front and the back it might just pull straight off um, but it looks like everything's kind of glued in you know, you know there's like little there's little control rod guides you know on the side right here uh, it's got like struts that go out to, you know, the midsection of the wings, but it doesn't look like it comes off. Uh, I think if you did, um, if you did try to do that, you'd break it. This, yeah, Jeff, that's got to be a typo, man. <laughs> that's got to be a typo. The wings... Yeah, the, the replacement wings are 99 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, that Aeros Viper is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, a little 50 millimeter jet, that thing is a load of fun. It runs absolutely great on 3S. I was a little skeptical, um, you know, but I mean, you, you get out there, you toss that thing around, it flies great on 3S. I haven't even tried it on 4S. I was I was pretty thrilled with the way it flew on 3S though, and it's so cheap. It's so cheap. <laughs> Pay it forward. No, I have not run negative expo. I think that'd be a terrible, terrible idea. But I can see where someone who is not familiar with Spectrum and has used Futaba forever and then they switch over to Spectrum, I could see where they would make that mistake and put negative expo in and not have a very good day flying. Dude, I think my cat can tear this thing up. I ain't gonna lie, I have to keep it up. You know, I can't be crashing this thing because I think he'll like pounce on it and, and start, you know, whatever this, I mean, this is a really thin film, like a thin mylar or something. Um, it'd be cool if there was someone in Horizon. It'd be cool if there was someone from Horizon in the chat right now that could talk to us uh, and tell us what these wings are made of. But the, the vapors, all of the vapors, for like the, I mean, the Vapor is an airframe that's been around for a while, guys. You know, this UMX Night Vapor, for those of you that are new to the hobby, I mean, this may be a new airframe to you. For those of us that have been around for a while, you know that this thing has been kicking around for probably 10 years, maybe more. Uh, you know, the original Vapor, I mean, that thing is, uh, that that's not a young airframe. That thing's been around for a while. Who can say when the first 
Vapor came out. Does anybody know? <laughs> That's right, Pilot Ryan. You know, when you're done flying, you can just wrap it around your sandwich. Yeah, around 2005. So thanks, JT200. 2005 is when the original Vapor came out. Man, that thing, that is an aged airframe. And they've been using this same material, you know, the whole time. They've changed a little bit of the design. They've had some more support structure in there to give it a little more of that positive camber effect. Um, you know, and you guys may not be able to see that, but it does have like a positive, you know, camber in the wing uh, to help it maintain more lift. Uh, everything that I've seen about now it's only a three channel airplane right so you only have throttle uh, rudder and elevator so I'm pretty sure they probably have the rudder on the aileron stick or you know to to be your roll um, channel which is fine uh, but like I was saying I mean I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm gonna go ahead and grab the NX 10 here uh, while we're talking and I'm gonna set up a new model and instead of reading the book and doing all the recommended settings and all that stuff I am going to set up a new model and I'm gonna tell it to use to set it up as a new bind and fly model this thing is newer than the UMX uh, night vapor so the night vapor should already be in here I should be able to set up a new bind and fly model go to the night timber or the night vapor select it and it should set everything up for me so uh let's see what's up let's see what's up so i'm going to press both of these buttons model select add new bind and fly so that's all blade helicopters all right, what's the number of the Night Vapor? This is the EFLU-1350. EFLU-1350. Uh. Oh, excuse me. Come on, man, it's not in here. Ryan, get Jason in here, dude. Tell him we need an update to the NX-10 stat. We need an update to the NX-10 right now that has the UMX Night Vapor pre-programmed in it. They got the UMX Turbo Timber, UMX Ultrix, Citation. They got the Waco, the Pits. These are all UMX planes. The s -Bach, the Beast, the Hyper Taxi, the GB, the 4180 and 4950. I don't remember what those are. The UMX Turbo Timber, UMX Timber, UMX A10. UMX F4F Wildcat, UMX F16, MiG-15, Ash-21, so yeah, they don't have, the UMX Night Vapor is not in here. <laughs> Jeff, I'm going to have to program it the old-fashioned way, man. And I'm just not going to mess with that in the middle of a show. That's crap. That makes me so sad. Yeah. 
Uh, so C Mafia, the way they're listed in the radio is they're listed by the part number. So whatever, like the EFL, um, you know, PKZ for part zone, um, all of the bind and fly models are listed by the part number and then it's got the name after it, right? So if it was in there, it'd be listed under EFLU uh, 1380 or whatever the part number is for the plane. Uh, that's how they have them sorted. So it, it's not in there. Mm. So does anybody have any questions about the NX-10? I know that Ryan and I, um, it, you know, kind of beat this thing to death. And Jason Merkel was in the chat on, um, on Saturday, if you guys didn't check. Uh, if you guys didn't see the RC Pilots Lounge on Saturday, it was a lot of fun. We had the Merry Boozers at the beginning of the show. Uh, and then, you know, Pilot Ryan and I discussed the NX-10. Uh, we had Jason Merkel in the chat, lighting it up, giving some good Easter eggs. If you guys missed it, the replay is still available. And I don't think that uh, Ryan has unlisted it yet, or if he's even going to. Uh, there's some great Easter eggs in there about some very cool upcoming things from our friends at Horizon Hobby. I'm not even going to talk about it right now, but I will tell you, I will tell you right now, save your money, fellas. Get your wallets ready for impact. Brace for impact. Because your wallets are about to get hit and they're about to get hit hard. And you're going to love it. <laughs> uh, Ken Sprouse, no. Yep. Your wallets are going to get hit and you're going to like it. Horizon's going to like it. If you click my link before you buy it, I'm going to like it. <laughs> All right. Hey, come here. God, that dog is dumb. He's so deaf. Come here. <laughs> my dog is a deaf bastard. I was going to get the dog up here and put him with the, you know, put the UMX Doberman with the UMX Night Vapor. See what he thinks about it. I'm sure he's not going to be thrilled when this thing starts flying through the house. We're going to turn on all the lights. And I'm going to attempt to fly some circuits around the house. I got like a big open living room and, you know, two openings on either side of the kitchen. So I'm going to try to make a lap around the kitchen and back into the living room with all the lights in the house turned off. And uh, I'm sure that the dog and, and the cat are going to love that. It's going to be awesome. What's up, Fred Baron? How are you doing? That's the wholesale price. Good luck, Dana. <laughs> Nobody gets them for wholesale price. Unless you're buying like a thousand of them. But I don't have that kind of buying capital. You know what I'm saying? My CapEx is maxed. <laughs> oh, JCP, that's a good idea. I do need to turn off the ceiling fan. Turn off the ceiling fan. But I do have like really tall vaulted ceilings. I think like the vaulted ceiling in my living room goes up to like 12 feet. So uh, I've got quite a bit of vertical space to be able to fly this thing around in there. Man, I'm so happy. <laughs> so stupid, but I love it. <laughs> All right. So Next week, 
we're going to be doing more stuff like we did today. And I know we don't do a lot of, I mean, uh, most of the time we do a lot of talking or we're doing a lot of flying. Tonight we were doing, you know, a little bit of a different something, something uh, where we were soldering up uh, some 3.5 millimeter to 4 millimeter bullet adapters for my avian 60 amp esc and installing that esc into the um the husky special edition from arrows rc sponsored by pilot ryan thank you very much sir so yeah that's what we were doing today and i know that that's probably a little boring right but hey you know every now and then i got to do something a little bit different but hopefully, you know, for you guys that, that uh, I mean, listen, I don't care how long you're in this hobby. Eventually, you're going to either be that guy or see that guy who's like terrible at soldering. Terrible. Ter I mean, terrible. And has like blobs everywhere and it's all gray and yucky and the wires are all frayed out and... I mean, it's just like a safety hazard all over the place. I've seen it too many times. And hopefully, you know, for those of you guys that were paying attention, hopefully, you know, if you were terrible at soldering before and you were paying attention earlier in the show for like the first 30 minutes of the show or so, uh, you learned a little something about some of the techniques that I use uh, for soldering uh, that type of stuff and doing it the right way instead of doing a slop job. <clears throat> yes. It's also a lot like riding your mom. <laughs> it's fun, but don't let your friends catch you on it. Sorry, it's the end of the show, man. I'm allowed to get a little surly. You know, the the uh, the monetization checkers don't look, you know, at the last 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, whoa, Mickey B, Mickey B. There is no cuddle time. I'm out. <laughs> you get in and you run. <laughs> so But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the other two facts. The other two facts is UMX night vapors are fun. No, I don't have anything weird in the Coke, man. It's just regular old Coca-Cola Classic. All right, so we got a few minutes left. We got eight minutes left, y'all. And then Gunia goes live about 15 minutes after that. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me uh, while we are getting towards those last eight minutes? Um... The answer to life is 42. So that's that's the answer to almost all the questions. But if you have anything like about these here NX10s or maybe this here Night Vapor, I can't tell you how it flies yet because I'm still charging up some batteries, but we will definitely be flying it through the house tonight. And Pilot Ryan, the answer to that is 42. 
a Raspberry Pi question. I may be able to answer a Raspberry Pi question. That's an interesting one. Uh, Guniak, I'd say, is probably pretty good at soldering by now. I think he's had some practice. He does it so much that he's actually concerned with what he's breathing in. Uh, I solder very, <clears throat> not very often. So I don't worry about like the vent and all that stuff. Like, you know, a tad little bit of lead smoke every month or so ain't gonna hurt you. Fred Barron, that'd be that'd be awesome. <laughs> I don't call it the the bonger. Call it like the bong rip. <laughs> take a rip off the bong, bump bump bump. Come and get it on, bump bump bump. Take a rip off the bong. <laughs> yeah, you know Ray does it so much that he needs to use lead free solder. You know, but me, I like my solder fully leaded. Do you need a monitor and a keyboard to set up a Raspberry Pi and Octoprint for a 3D printer? It depends on how cool you are. So you could technically do it because all the, the initial setup is all done using like an SD flash utility on your PC. So you would flash the SD card and the first time you put it in your Raspberry Pi, it's going to expand it and, and just make it work. Um, if you did all of the stuff to put it on your network, uh, which is just a configuration file, if you set up that configuration file before you put it in the Raspberry Pi, where that configuration file has like your Wi-Fi, SSID, and all that stuff in it, or if you have it plugged into the network and have your network adapter set up for DHCP, um... You could technically do it without ever hooking up a monitor, but I'm getting really deep in the weeds here. The easiest way to do it is to hook up a monitor, hook up a keyboard, and, and you're absolutely perfect. But you asked, do you need it? I mean, the question is, or the, the answer is, if you're very good at setting up like headless servers, you could do it and then use something like Putty to open up like an SSH session, uh, like a secure socket layer shell. And, uh, but you would have to know what the IP address is. So you'd have to have some kind of IP scanner to scan your network after it negotiates a DHCP address. It'd be a pain in the ass, but can it be done was the question and the answer is, Yes, but you got to be really good. Now, once I get Raspberry Pi loaded and all that stuff, I do it with a TV. You know, I, I do it. I plug into a monitor. I use a keyboard. I set everything up. And once it's set up and I've got a DHCP address and I learn what the MAC address is, I set what's called a DHCP reservation in my router. Uh, so I always know what the right IP address is and then I never use the mouse again uh, because I can go in with any computer in my house or even my cell phone and I can get into a CLI, a command line session through SSH. And that is how I do it with Putty. Sorry, man. That was a very long answer for what could have been a very... Um, you know, a very long answer for uh, what, what could have been a very simple question, but I decided to get super difficult with it. And I apologize. But you asked, 
do you need a monitor? And the answer is no. Do I highly recommend it? Do you want one? Yes, you do. You want a monitor. You want a keyboard, but you don't need it. <laughs> uh, Eric Hill, that's interesting. I haven't noticed that. With Vine. Who thinks the Draco is going to be a forever backordered item at release? Um, it absolutely will. So it, here's what I'll tell you. If you want a Draco, if you want a Draco, you're either going to need to pre-order it or get really lucky. Because this is going to be one of those things where every time it comes back in stock, it's going to be gone within a day. I say the pre-orders, they're going to sell out of the pre-orders long before they ever arrive. So, you know, unless they wait until all of the Dracos are here and in the warehouse and then put them on pre-order, they're going to sell out of the pre-orders. And then they're going to be sold out for months. And then they're going to get more in and those are going to sell out. And they're going to be sold out for months. And then they're going to get more in. And they're going to sell out. You know, so yes. Over the next six months, I see there being a total of maybe 72 hours that you will be able to buy a Draco and actually get on a list to get one. Of them actually being listed as being in stock you know what I'm saying like they're gonna be in and out and gone so yes I, I do believe that it will be sold out like a mofo for a long time so I saw somebody had a question Can the iX12 use the ISP MX or do you have to export from the 12 as just SPMX? Um, the NX10 can read ISPMX files straight off of the iX series radios. So the iX12, iX20, you can export it as an ISPMX. NX10, NX6, NX8, the NX series can read those just fine. Yes, sir. Can you charge the NX10 with a Gen 2 smart charger? Uh, yes. So the NX10 charges from a USB cable. Um, all of the NX series charge from a USB cable. And the Gen 2 smart chargers have a 2 amp 5 volt USB output on them. So yes, you can absolutely do that. I have a turbo car and use 100 or 103 mixed with my 91p water gas for a good boost. Nice. Yeah, I forgot in California they can't go over like 91 octane, which is just a baffling thing to me. Because some of these guys are big babies. You know, and they're like, I don't like the Draco. I mean, look, uh, <laughs> the Wilg is kind of an ugly plane. I mean, let's let's be serious for a second. The Wilga is kind of an ugly duckling of the airplane world. But what Mike Patey did to that thing was amazing. So, what is he doing? I don't know. Are you going to come say hi? Yeah, no. No? <laughs> what? No, you don't look terrible. You lie. Lies. All I'm not lying. Hold on. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Don't be a baby. I am a baby. Oh, my God. So, Amy was going to come over, but she chickened out and she ran. <laughs> 
So yeah, the Draco, the Wilga is an ugly airplane. What Mike Patey did with the Draco is bad to the bone. So, I like that plane. I think that a lot of people are going to like that plane. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, if if what we heard from a special guest in Ryan's show uh, this past Saturday was accurate, and I don't know how many people were paying attention, um, whatever you saw on the price of that plane when they, you know, snuck it on the website for like 12 hours. I think it was listed at 599 or it was listed at 499, you know, 2 meter Draco X whatever, blah 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 499 pre-order now. Everybody was happy. That is not what the price is going to be. Uh that is going to be a $600 airplane, fellas. And take my money. Take my money. Take it. <laughs> yep, it will be 600 bucks, and it's going to be sold out forever. Uh, look, I'll pay the 600 bucks just to support Mike Patey, because I love Mike Patey, and I hope that he's getting a ton of royalties off this thing. So if Mike Patey's getting money when I buy a freaking Draco... You bet, man. I will buy one just to support Mike Patey. All right, guys. So it's 10.04. I am going to go and jump off here. The battery's never charged, but, man, we're going to play with this thing next week. Oh, next week also. Uh, like this week, we were soldering up some connectors, and we were replacing the ESC in the... Husky Special Edition, sponsored by Pilot Ryan. Get yours today at pilotryanmedia.com. Um, next week, I have the high performance 90 millimeter nine blade, 1900 K. That's a lot of nines. 1900 KV fan, and we're going to be installing that in the free wing 90 millimeter F16 next week. So. Uh, be sure to tune in for that. I'm sure you know a lot of you guys have seen it before. There's going to be a lot more talking than there is playing around with installing a motor. But you know the plane's like ready to go. I just need to slap it in there and and test it. <laughs> anyway, you guys all have a great night. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thank you for stopping by and hanging out with us tonight. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you learned something and. You know, maybe we'll uh, have some videos up here soon about the super cool night vapor and this thing flying all over the place and dogs and cats running after it like crazy animals. Uh, anyway, you guys <laughs> have fun. Smash the like button. Visit rcairmarshal.com for the links to the hottest stuff in RC, including some RC Air Marshal gear. Join the channel if you want to. That supports us a lot. Use our affiliate links. It supports us a lot. Um, and just keep watching videos when they come out. That supports us a lot, too. We appreciate all of it. We appreciate you guys coming out every week. And uh, be sure to tune in here in nine minutes for Mr. Ray Manuel, Guniac 33, Fiery Booty. Uh, he will be going live at 10.15 Eastern Time, 7.15 Pacific. Uh, we will see you guys next week on the RC Air Marshal YouTube channel for Air Marshal Monday, 8 o'clock, every Monday. We'll see you there. Good night, guys.